What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Let's Machine, back here again for Practical Machinist. Before we get started, make sure you guys like and subscribe below to see more videos. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so today on Shop Talk, we're gonna be talking about something that happens no matter what you do and no matter how well you try to plan, and that is messing up. Messing up is gonna happen Today we're not gonna talk so much about not messing up, we're gonna talk about what happens and what to do when you mess up, whether you are someone on the floor or whether you are someone who owns a company. So to start off guys, let's start with if you are a machinist or you are an operator, you are a floor person. At the end of the day, mistakes happen. Um, I hope that the people you work for understand this, I hope you understand this. No matter what you do, at some point a mistake is gonna happen. The first thing that you need to keep in mind is being able to catch mistakes as soon as they happen. Very rarely, guys, do we do one-off parts. Some of you guys do one-off parts all the time. But if you're doing a production run, if something is going wrong, you need to be able to identify it and catch it early in the run. Not when you have 99 parts done or 10,000 parts done. If you are doing a single one-off part, you need to be able to identify where the problems are gonna be or if something has gone wrong right from the beginning, whether it's in the programming stage or the first operation. I mean, if you create a mistake at the end of the part, it's a single part, you know, there's only so much you can do. But catching mistakes early is going to be critical. Um, I can't tell you how many times over the years something's happened where, you know, we do a run of parts, a tool broke or chipped 30 parts into the run, we ran 100 and we have 70 parts now, we need to figure out what to do with. It makes life infinitely more difficult when you're dealing with an issue that has been ongoing rather than something you catch right when it happens. And the way to catch things as they happen, of course, is being aware. That means doing your first off sheets. That means constantly measuring during a run. That means checking your tools. Staying on top of these things to be able to identify when the problem happens is gonna make it a lot easier when you go to you know, your supervisor or your boss or the owner and say, listen, here's the issue. Once the problem's been identified, guys, here's where we kinda get into it. Um, depending on what's happened, I am of the opinion that if it's something small that you can fix yourself and it hasn't cost any real money, so let's say you break a tool on one part, that part gets scrapped, it was a chunk of aluminum that cost, you know, a dollar, you have 10,000 more to do. I personally don't advise going and making a big deal out of something that is a little bit routine like that. Um, you know, I've worked with people before who are very on top of things like this and it's good. You want to identify where the problems are so you don't break three tools the same way. But at the end of the day, mistakes happen. And being able to identify whether it's a mistake that's routine and you can fix it yourself and you move on and you don't need to cause anybody any extra headaches is one thing. Being able to identify and say, ooh, it kicked that part and now my vice jaws are damaged and now this is a bigger issue. That's when you want to go tell somebody and make sure that somebody is aware. And of course, if you have a policy where you're supposed to tell when anything goes wrong, make sure you're doing that. I'm not advising you hide anything. Um, I definitely just think that sometimes it's easy to make a mountain out of a molehill when realistically you can solve a problem pretty quick, the run gets back going, one part out of 10,000 is nothing, and away you go. The one thing I advise you never do is try to hide an issue or fix an issue that is a larger issue without letting people know. You know, you don't need to go to the top of the chain to let uh, someone know that the finish on 70 parts is no good. But bumping it up and letting your supervisor know, hey listen, we're having an issue with this part, uh, the finish has started to chatter, I didn't notice it. Trying to hide it and go and fix it yourself, you know, at the end of the day guys, you might get away with it, uh, you might get away with it the next time. At some point, you're not gonna get away with it, and then it's gonna become apparent that even though you were trying to fix it yourself, you essentially were trying to hide something to save your own skin. You know, mistakes happen, mistakes happen. I once, when I was an apprentice, I uh, sent out a whole skid of parts for paint and I put the wrong paint coat on them. That was a very, very large, very costly mistake. And you know what, I never did it again. Um, mistakes happen, you learn from them, but trying to hide it is not going to make anything better. So you made a mistake, you let somebody know, of course, once you've messed up, own it. Um, one of the things that I appreciate in my staff is if something goes wrong, there's not that instant, oh, the machine must have screwed up. Oh, there must have been a power surge. Realistically, my guys will come to me and say, do you know what, I don't think I tightened that vice properly. Or do you know what, I didn't set my height offset properly. 
trying to go ahead and identify where they could have gone wrong is what makes them good employees to me. Uh, that would make what's, what makes them useful to me. Even if it is something like the machine did actually glitch, and it happens once in a while, but not as often as we might like to think when things go wrong. There's not much I can do about that. I can get a Haas technician in to look at my machine, et cetera, et cetera. Being able to identify things that they did wrong and tell me what went wrong so they can not do it again, that's where the, you know, the benefit lies in having people like that. Being able to identify where you've made mistakes prevents you from making those mistakes again. So I really like when people take ownership of what they've done and I'm the same. Um, you know, if I screw up on ordering material or I screw up uh, setting up a part, I'll tell my guys, listen, bear with me here, see if you can help me out so we can, you know, figure this out. But this was my mistake, this wasn't on you. Um, I think taking responsibility for your mistakes is big. So if you are a machinist or you're someone on the floor, that's kind of my process for when things go wrong. If you are someone in a position where you're dealing with customers, this is where it can get a little different. Um, at the end of the day, like I said at the beginning, things are gonna go wrong. No matter what you do, at the end of the day, something is going to go wrong. The same way where if you can fix it yourself in house before going to your customer without causing any headaches. So let's say I have a run of parts, I screw up 20. If I have material on the shelf, they supply material for the other 100 parts and I need 20 and I have material on the shelf, we just run the parts, we just fix it. We fix the problem. Um, if we got a run of parts and we see that the tap didn't work properly and we need to go through and manually retap all of them, we just fix it. Um, it's the easiest way to get things out the door and that's what you do, obviously. The one thing I would really advise against doing and I feel like it's a tendency that I have had before is don't communicate to your customers that something went wrong but you fixed it if at the end of the day all the parts are correct. All it does is kind of sow doubt. Um, I feel like it's kind of that validation where you're looking for, oh, do you know what, things went wrong but we're such good machinists that we fixed it. That's not really a great stance. I mean, I, I think it's people trying to give humility but if you're shipping good parts out the door that are all on the, you know, to the specs that they asked for, they're the correct parts, I don't think it's wise to highlight where you had problems unless you are looking to change the part or you know stop things, you know modify something on their end to make it easier for you in the future. I, I just feel like it's not a great stance to take and I've done it and I've kind of regretted it in the future because I feel like it has made my customers doubt me. On the flip side, you do want to be very open if it's something like they've given you 100 parts of Molly Bendham or Hasselhoy or something crazy that you can't source easily, it was their material, you have now screwed it up. Or if they sent you a part that they had done three operations on, you're doing operation four and you screwed up. Trying to go back and cover that up and say, oh, we'll just whip it off real quick, or oh, do you know what, we had a shipping delay while you're speedily trying to order material. I don't think that's a very good stance to take. Um, I feel like being open in that perspective and saying, hey, listen, you come to them with a problem and you come to them with a solution, so we screwed up the part, but I have another piece of material coming in. It's gonna be delayed by a week. We're gonna do 100% of the work, et cetera, et cetera. Coming to them with a solution at the same time that you're coming to them with the problem to let them know what's going on, I don't think that is a bad stance to take because it shows that you are being honest with them about why the delay is gonna happen or you know why it's late getting to paint or whatever it may be. But at the same time, you're not coming to them with your hands up saying, I don't know what to do. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a customer and said, listen, X, Y, Z happened, here's my solution, I'm gonna take it on, um, I'm gonna order material at my own cost, and they've turned around and said, oh, do you know what, we have tons of that on the shelf, thank you very much for offering, but we'll just send it over. Um, if I had gone to them and maybe been a little bit more trying to deflect blame, I doubt they'd take that kind of stance with me to help me out. So I do think being very open and honest with your, with your customers and your partners when it's appropriate is the right thing to do. I just don't think the same way you shouldn't go to the big boss of your factory when one part is broken, if you can just change the tool, is a good stance. I wouldn't go to your customer and let them know every single one of your problems. They have their own problems. Unless it's something where it's gonna directly affect them or it's something where you, you, know, you feel like you're trying to cover something up, that's the time that you should be open and honest with them. So at the end of the day, guys, mistakes happen. When things go wrong, that's kind of my advice for it. 
Honesty is always the best policy. Never try to hide anything. When you can fix things yourself, do try to fix them yourself, but don't try to hide anything or be sneaky. I hope this has helped, guys. Let me know in the comments what the biggest screw up you have ever had personally was. I already let you know mine, and it was a multi-thousand dollar mistake that I made when I was about 18. Um, I have had lots since then, but you know that was a fun one. So, and literally it was because I wrote a four on the part instead of a five. So, you know, let me know some of your bonehead mistakes below. We can all have a laugh, okay? Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.